Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for worshiping with us here at Salem United Methodist Church. I'm Bob Kimball, speaking to you from the Caribbean down at St. Martin's, but there's no vacation for Jesus. We're having a wonderful worship experience planned for you today, and we're so glad that you decided to join us. Our music this morning will be again led by Dr. Allison Moore, along with our summer choir. Yeah, it has a very special selection this morning that I know you will enjoy. Pastor Stacy will be sharing with us her message on the role of the Holy Spirit as our intercessor, the one who prays for us even when we can't find the words. After a selection from our handbell choir, our opening prayer and scripture will be led by today's liturgist, Marion O'Neill. But first, our handbell choir. worship in spirit and truth by the grace and presence of God within and among us we offer our worship in the power of the Holy Spirit please join me in the opening prayer O great spirit whose breath gives life in the world and whose voice is heard in the soft breeze we need your strength and wisdom Talk us to work in your beauty. Give us eyes ever to behold the red and blue sunset. Make us wise so we may understand what you have taught us. Help us learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Make us always ready to come to you 
with clean hands and steady eyes. So when life fades, like the fading sunset, our spirits may come to you without shame. Amen. Good morning, everybody, in the sanctuary and on Zoom. It's also nice to welcome our summer choir back to help with the leading of our hymns. And, um, and they're going to sing a song a little bit later today. So I'm sorry if the quality isn't the greatest at home on Zoom. Um, we hope that you will join us in the spirit of worship and sing along. And, um, and then, uh, you know, come on back sometime to join us in the sanctuary when you're ready and when you're feeling up to it. Love this hymn. Let's sing it together. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of love. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of love. Words of life and beauty, teach me things. Blessed one. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of love. Sin I lift to the law and call wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of love. All for pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Jesus, holy Savior, sanctify forever. next hymn as a prayer as we set our minds to worship this morning spirit of the living god joining us in the sanctuary and on zoom to worship this morning choir thanks for joining us as well
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to everyone worshiping with us. I've asked um, a couple of folks to join me up here. Um, on behalf of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, I've asked Bob to join us. I think they picked the person whose birthday was the closest to today to come up. And um, with him is our new staff person, but not quite so new to us. Today, we welcome officially to our staff at the church, Tara Cully. She's not new, um, having served as the director of Noah's Ark Preschool Program um, through the end of June this year. On July 1st, she officially started her new position, and it's a brand new position for us here at Salem. And her title is Communications and Social Media Manager. That's a mouthful. I got it right. Didn't I? So please welcome her. We're so excited to have her in this capacity and also to have this new opportunity to expand our ministry. I shared uh, in the first service that I was part of a conversation with a number of colleagues and they were um, kind of sharing with one another what if you could add a position at your church at this time, what would it be? And they all wanted a Tara. <laughs> it's true because we know that with the use of online ministry and social media on the rise, now is a wonderful time for us to expand this ministry. And Tara has a vision and a strategy to help carry us forward. And we're so excited. You've seen her many talents in leading Noah's Ark, and we believe that she is the right person to lead us in this direction. You may know that she created our church website and has been refining it in all these uh, months. Each week, she's the one who creates our key verse image that we use in worship and in social media. Uh, we were able to work on a mini grant for our church for technology and thanks to um, her expertise, we were able to receive that grant from our annual conference this past week and that helps offset the expense of some of the new equipment. Now, um, her, as I said, her position is new, but her work will entail some of the traditional administrative tasks that we have as a church, but she will be concentrating on expanding our social media ministry. She started us on Instagram, and for those of you who are like my age and older, Instagram is what all the younger people got on when we got on Facebook. So she uh, is gonna be doing Facebook and Instagram and trying to expand the way that we use social media to really engage people more and updating our website and partnering uh, with community groups. And she's also um, exploring how we can expand our online ministry, not just having worship available online, but other ways to engage people. Now, some of her work hours will be in the church office and some will be um, from home. And all of us on the church staff are kind of redefining the hours that we're in the office, trying to use the, um, make the best use of our time. Um, but following our service, we're going to have a, a small reception. Are we outside, inside? I'm looking, outside. And um, so I thank Lauren for putting that together. And um, you can greet her while you are browsing our wonderful giveaway items. And I want to thank Judy for getting that all uh, set up for us. As we've been cleaning in the Salem house, we've uh, uncovered lots of treasures and they need um, good homes. So everything is free. There are books, mugs, um, things for your walls. Please um, take something and uh, use it with love. But um, we do officially welcome Tara today. As we share our prayer requests as a church family, 
um, I wanted to offer our sympathy, our prayers of support to the family and friends of Kenny Dryden, who passed away on Monday. Um, Kenny was an early service uh, attender. The flowers in the narthex are a gift from the family to us from the funeral, which was held Friday evening and the burial was yesterday in our cemetery. So please continue to keep his friends and family in your prayers. And we also wanna continue our prayers for Rich who had outpatient surgery on Wednesday, went, uh, Friday, it went well. Sorry, uh, looking at my notes. And um, for his excellent caregiver, Judy, we lift them up in our prayers. So I thank you for sharing your prayer requests and we encourage you to send those to me by email, text, or calling my cell phone. Or if you are worshiping with us online, feel free to put them in the chat that we will get later. Or if you uh, want to send it through the website, if you are worshiping uh, online, you may do that as well. I invite us now to a time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We are so grateful for this time of worship. We offer our worship in spirit and in truth with thanksgiving and humility. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of prayer. Teach us to use this gift wisely and with gratitude. We lift up to you our joys and our concerns this day and those things that are weighing upon our hearts. Give us compassion that we might care for one another especially those most vulnerable and in need. We pray for those places in our country and world where there is great suffering. We lift up those impacted by the tropical storms and those experiencing severe weather. We lift up to you, O oh God, the people of Haiti. We pray for all who are in need we are grateful for those who give of themselves to sacrifice and care for others. So we pray for all those on the front lines. We think of people in Florida in recovery mode. In your great love, O oh God, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give us courage and hope in all our times of trouble. We lift up those who are ill and those awaiting surgery or test results, those who are recovering, those with ongoing health concerns. Especially we name Rich and Millie, Karen's brother Ray. We pray for Ralph and Carol's sister Terry and for Rocky's family, especially David. We pray for baby Miles and his parents, Lydia and Roberto. For Ira. We pray for Pastor Ernest. We pray for all those who are unable to worship with us. We pray for those who are grieving, especially the family and friends of our dear friend, Kenny. Thank you for his life, for the love we shared with him, for his service to his family and our community. We thank you that in your grace, he has entered into eternal life with our Savior. We pray for traveling mercies, and especially we think of Bob and Carol, and we're so grateful that through technology, Bob is still able to be with us 
hosting our online worship. We pray for all who serve in our community and ask your blessings on the helpers, that they might have strength and courage and perseverance. And in the silence of our hearts, we offer our own petitions and praises. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on your church and on believers throughout the world. And bless Salem with the power of your spirit that we may serve you faithfully. Guide us into the future you have for us. And may we be quick to answer your call. We thank you for the opportunities you place before us. We dedicate it all to your honor and glory. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A special welcome to all of our children and our young people who are worshiping with us. I'd like to invite all of us, whatever our age, to approach our Bible lesson with childlike openness and faith. We are still talking about the Holy Spirit. And our Bible lesson today tells us that the Holy Spirit does something very special for us. The Holy Spirit praise for us. We call this being an intercessor. Now that's a big word and probably not one that any of us use very often. But I want us to think for a minute together about what this word could mean for us. And I thought about a word that sounds a little bit like it and that is interstate. Where does an interstate highway take you? It goes between states. It takes you from one state to another. So an intercessor is someone who is a go-between. One person goes to another person on behalf of someone else. That may have just confused us more than cleared things up. Let me try it this way. The Holy Spirit goes to God, our Heavenly Father, to ask God to help us with what we need. So the Holy Spirit is the one that goes between us and God. The Holy Spirit knows what we need even better than we know ourselves. And the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. So I brought along a little friend to show you this morning. And I don't know how easily you'll be able to see it. There's a picture in the PowerPoint that maybe uh, Mr. Mark can throw up there for us. But this is my little praying bunny. And she's a beanie baby. And they all have names. And so my praying bunny's name is Grace. Now, Grace, my praying bunny, reminds me that I need to talk to God in prayer. I don't always need to ask God for something when I pray. God just wants us to spend time in prayer, a time where Yes, we talk to God, but we also listen to God. Sometimes that's important for us to remember. Prayer is a special gift that we have so that we can share with God the things that are the most important to us. And prayer helps us to know 
what is most important to God, too. But always remember that the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Will you pray with me? Dear Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for helping us to pray. Bless all of our church family, especially our young people. Help us all to grow in our faith. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank everybody for your patience. We're really trying to improve the Zoom experience for our listeners. I, I just have to say our bases declared they were loud enough and did not need microphones. So um, I'm sure you don't need them here in the sanctuary, but we're hoping folks at home will be able to hear them. Our scripture today is from Romans 8, 24 to 30. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. 
but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. How wonderful to have our choir singing. And I hope that in the midst of listening to the beauty of the music, you didn't miss the message of the words. But in that, the songs that they have sung and in our scripture lesson, we are reminded that prayer is a gift for all believers. And we sometimes need to stop and remind ourselves of this. It would be easy for us to take the privilege of prayer for granted. It is always available to us, the ability to pray. And I believe that deepening our prayer life, both as individuals and as a congregation, should always be a priority for us. And today we're reminded that the Holy Spirit plays a unique role in our praying. And we are going to focus on this aspect of the Holy Spirit. Here's a general statement about prayer that I find helpful. It is a quote from Mother Teresa, who says, prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God. So I would invite each of you to place yourself in God's hands right now. Imagine yourself enfolded and held safe by the very presence of our loving God. My friends, God wants the best for you. And God is already at work bringing out of whatever is happening right now in your life in our, and in our world something good. And God is present right now through the Holy Spirit. Let us recall the words of Jesus when he promised his followers the Holy Spirit. These words recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16, in the Amplified Version, read like this. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever. Yes, the Holy Spirit is our helper in so many ways. And these various names for the Spirit highlight the different roles the Spirit plays in our lives. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, and strengthener. We've been looking at these different aspects of the Holy Spirit, and I just want to review them briefly. And each one has an image for you. The Holy Spirit at creation. The Holy Spirit as the breath of God. The Holy Spirit as our teacher. The Holy Spirit as our comforter. The presence of God as the source of our true freedom. 
And finally, the Holy Spirit as our intercessor. And this is our focus today, the role of the Holy Spirit as our intercessor. Our key verse now with the image provided by Tara, Romans 8, 27b. The Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. I spoke earlier in my children's message about what an intercessor does. Intercession is the highest expression of love because it is putting the needs of others ahead of our own. And when we offer prayers on behalf of others, that is intercessory prayer. We know that we all need the intercession of Jesus for our salvation and that we would be reconciled with God only through Jesus Christ. And we need the continuing intercession of the Holy Spirit for us to grow in what is often called holiness. Don't let that term make you nervous. But the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. That's part of what that verse was about predestination and so on. The Holy Spirit continues to work in us. For us to make the best use of our gift of prayer, we truly need the intercession of Jesus and of the Holy Spirit. John Bunyan explains it this way. Prayer is a sincere, sensible, affectionate outpouring of the soul to God through Christ in the strength and assistance of the Spirit for such things as God has promised. We need the Holy Spirit to help us pray. To effectively pray, we need to lean on the Spirit of God. And we need to remember that as believers in Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And so that spirit within us leads us to converse with God through prayer. In this same chapter of the book of Romans, Paul writes this truth. You are in the spirit since the spirit of God dwells in you. The Holy Spirit does more than help us to pray. The Holy Spirit actually prays for us. I think about that verse. And there have been times, some not very long ago, where I did not have the words to pray. And I just said, Holy Spirit, you take over and pray for me. And it's okay to do that. The Holy Spirit is the perfect intercessor for us. And I want to um, share with you some reasons why the Holy Spirit is the perfect intercessor for us. First of all, as I said, the Holy Spirit prays for us when we cannot pray ourselves. Our ability is not perfect. But the ability of the Holy Spirit is perfect. Sometimes we're so impacted by what is going on in our lives, perhaps something going on in our nation or our world, that we just can't formulate the words. Uh, at my work at Board of Child Care, I spent a lot of time studying how trauma impacts the brain and how we as spiritual caregivers can help in the healing process. And we know from doing scans of brains that when an individual has suffered trauma, their brain physically does not operate the same way. And so that would be true for us as well. And sometimes we just can't formulate the words that we need to pray. And so we turn it over to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has power that we do not. 
Do you remember um, the children's song about Jesus, that line, we are weak, but he is strong. So the same thing is true of the Holy Spirit. We are weak in our praying, but the Holy Spirit is strong. The Holy Spirit is unfailing. And the Holy Spirit prays with wisdom that we lack. The Spirit knows what we need better, better, listen to this, than we know ourselves. Now, I'm going to speak for a moment to those who are a little um, older, like myself. If you're a parent or a godparent or a grandparent, have you ever said to a child or someone younger than you, I know better than you do? Or maybe you remember hearing those words from your elders. And, you know, in some ways that's true. In some circumstances, someone with more life experience knows better. If that's true for us as human beings, how much more so is this true of God? Certainly the Holy Spirit knows better than we do what we need. And the Holy Spirit has a perspective that we cannot obtain. Something might look good to us in the short term. We want this specific thing right now in our lives. But in the divine perspective of eternity, the Spirit knows best. And so the Spirit always prays with God's will in mind. And our key verse brings this together specifically. The Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And what did Jesus teach us about prayer? We are to pray for God's will to be done, not our will. And sometimes we have to release our own desires and allow them to be shaped by the Holy Spirit that we might pray with God's will in mind. And my friends, the Holy Spirit prays for us with a mercy that we cannot fathom. God's mercy is absolute. And this Holy Spirit prays with a connection we do not possess. Now remember, um, the Holy Spirit is part of what we call the Trinity. We believe in God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so the Spirit has divine authority. Finally, the Holy Spirit prays for us with absolute love. A love that we cannot even begin to measure. And God loves us so much and always wants what is best for us. And we can place our trust in that love. And so because the Holy Spirit knows our need and knows the will of God, the Holy Spirit is the perfect intercessor for us. And in fact, the Holy Spirit fulfills the very definition of an intercessor. The Spirit makes prayers, petitions, and appeals in our favor on our behalf to God. And the Spirit links us with Jesus and the Heavenly Father. The Spirit brings our prayers to heaven. In a few moments, we're going to sing the hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. And uh, I thought about this image that appears in the third verse of the hymn, of the hymn and I, I hope you'll listen for it. Thy wings shall my petition bear. It's talking about the Holy Spirit, the wings of the Spirit, lifting our prayers, working on our behalf. And in another uh, song, I read this image, a description of the Holy Spirit as the ceaseless voice of prayer. You see, the Holy Spirit never stops praying for us. 
So I want to conclude with another image. And you may recognize this very famous statue of Jesus. In the lobby of the old part of Johns Hopkins Hospital, you will find this statue. statue. It's hard to get a picture of it because it's so huge. And this is a, a, an angle kind of looking up at it and the arms of Jesus. And, you know, people from all over the world come to Johns Hopkins. And many of them come and stop and they offer their prayers at the feet of Jesus. They leave flowers, they leave trinkets. There's a book you can sign and write your prayers. If you've ever been there, you know that the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God is palpable in this place as you stand at the feet of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is continually lifting our prayers and our petitions in the name of Jesus on our behalf to our loving Heavenly Father. Before we join together in our affirmation of faith, I want to invite you to respond to the word of God by examining your own prayer life and thinking about our prayer life together as a congregation. And, and I would like to invite you to consider an action step in response to the gift of the Holy Spirit as our intercessor. We've all taken great joy in having the opportunity for many of us to gather together. But as we look around, there are some people who are missing. And in large part, our young children in particular are not able to join us in person. And to a great extent, our youth have been gathering virtually um, thanks to Miss Judy and continuing the Sunday school class. And this past week, um, Judy invited the youth to come to the church and they were so excited to be here in person. And um, she discussed with them some plans that we're gonna be doing with them. And I would ask that you would intensify your prayers, particularly for our young people, for our children, for the young people in our community. We have scheduled on July 23rd a free outdoor movie night. Um, now, our youth are going to be serving refreshments, and they will ask if you wish to make a donation. And this um, money will go to help support their activities. And one of the things that we're planning to do is participate in the big youth event held in Ocean City. Um, it has been called Rock for many years when it was only our annual conference. And this January, we're going to be joining with the Peninsula Delaware Conference. So it's going to be an even bigger group of youth. And they've given it a new name. And I think I have it right. It's going to be called Wave. So think about it. It's at the ocean. It's going to be called Wave. So we're excited and a lot of our youth want to go and we're going to try to help them raise some money so we can go for that. So come out on the 23rd if uh, a movie is your thing. It's, it's an iconic movie. Um, if, if all our young people will know, know what it is. They're excited about it. If you don't want to attend, um, encourage your friends and neighbors. If you're on Facebook, share the post about the movie so that we can get the word out in the community. But it's gonna be a fun evening and a great way for us all to show our love, particularly for our young people. And so we thank you for your support and I would encourage you to continue to pray for our church family as we move forward, answering the call of Jesus Christ and to pray for all of God's people, prayer, 
is our gift from God, but a prayer that we can use on behalf of others. So one of my favorite passages in the Bible is Romans 8, but the ending part of that chapter. And so our affirmation of faith today comes from those verses in Romans 8. And I think we'll, um, it's, it's in your bulletin and it will also appear. So it begins with a question, and this is a word from scripture, but a question for all of us to consider. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You are certainly welcome to see these words up on the screen. But sometimes there's something wonderful and tactile about picking up a hymnal and looking in the hymnal and singing it from the hymnal. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to find it in the hymnal, it's number 496. However you wish to worship, please join along today. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour Cast on him my every care. 
and pray for us. Indeed, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and carries the prayers of what we need directly to our Father's heavenly throne. And now may the God who breathes life into us be our delight. May Jesus Christ fill us with hope and may the Holy Spirit be our teacher, advocate, guide, comforter, and intercessor today and always. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and rain fall soft on your fields and until